Hi guys, right, so I just did a whole, tut uh, whole tutorial and realised that I wasn't recording. So, we'll do it again. Um, another Maya tutorial from my guy, this time on Bifrost Graph and some simple low level nodes. How we can understand them and it's going to help us level up and sort of move forward a little bit. This is really simple stuff, probably covered in some other people's videos. But um, I just thought I'd go through it because sometimes um someone else teaching these things what well, could be beneficial so let's get the graph editor in here so i'm gonna snap that in there i might just drag the oh let's just leave it all here and see how we go right so let's create a graph we've got an input which we're going to keep today and an output we've got a cube in the scene i'm going to drag that in so all we're going to do today is we're, we're going to make bifrost um move this cube around using some controls which we'll put back into Maya so that we can move it around. It's nice and simple. First thing I'm going to do is put this on a display layer, this cube, because I want to be able to hide it when Bifrost replicates that cube. So in fact, let's just keep it hidden, actually. The first node we're going to use is called uh, Get Point Position. Um, basically, all we're looking at there is a bunch of points on our cube and we're asking Bifrost to get that. So we can type in get PP, which is get point position, and we're going to get that, and we're going to put it in here. So as it stands, we're just, we're just holding some data. We're holding the positional data of the points. So what do we need to do? We need to add something to that. And I'm not talking maths, although it is maths, but we need to add some translation. So we want to stick in and add node and we'll put a point position into add now because we've got an add node we need a value for that add at the moment it's just add on its own it means nothing so if we right click down here we can create a value node so this creates a float free value node now all that means for us beginners is we've got a value of x, y, and z. Translate x, in our case, translate y, and translate z, z. Quite simple, all right? So, we've got, got the point position, we're adding to it using this value, um, and the next thing we need to do is set the point position again. So we're gonna set it, well not again, but for the first time. I could have typed in set pp there, but we're just gonna scroll down so we've got the point position, we've added a value to it, and we're going to set it. We'll put that output into there, and we'll get the original geometry, because that's what set point position requires, to look back on itself. There is a geometry, and now if we plug this into the output, we can hide our original object. Bifrost object is there. So if I go to this value now and type in 1 in X, we can see that it's moved in X. Type in zero, it goes back. Type in one, in Z, it goes forward, zero, you get the point, and in Y, stick in two, and it's moved upwards. So back to zero. That's great. However, we can't keyframe any of this. We could add some proce uh, procedural animation to it. We're not gonna do that today, but we can't keyframe any of this inside Bifrost. Whether or not you can in the future, I don't know. But what I want to show you is, and let's just open this up so we can see it a bit better, is that we can take our value node and feed it back into the input, which is our kind of lifeline back into Maya. Now that says value, we're just going to rename that. You don't have to rename it, but we are. Translate. Spell that wrong. Translate. And now that's translate. So where is that? Why is this helping us? Well, if we go back to um, Maya and we click on the Bifrost Graph node, we can see now that we've got Translate X, Y, and Z. If we click on that, middle mouse, left and right, we can move that. We can keyframe it. Like so. And so now we've got that information back into Maya. The great thing about that is it's not just what I've just done. We can add a whole host of feedbacks back into Maya um, using that input node. So that's all it is. Get point position, 
add a value out, set point position, and then we're going to go back into the input node, which allows us to have an input in Maya. I'm going to leave it at that. There is a part two to this um, where we're going to use more than one object, um, but we're going to allow that one object to have its own attributes. So I will see you in the next one. Cheers.